So I thought going into this quarantine, I was gonna save a ton of money not going places. And I definitely have saved quite a bit on food. Being in my house so much though has made me analyze everything and wanna buy things to make it perfect. Which has led me to make quite a few online purchases I shouldn't have. Because I haven't been spending money on Ubers, restaurants, or a gym membership, I justified to myself I could make some random purchases. Some of them have been worth it and some of them I really would not recommend. Don't worry, I didn't buy the pizza pouch yet. Just kidding, I'm not gonna buy a pizza pouch, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I've noticed that without the stimulation of going places, I crave buying stuff more than I ever really have, which is weird. I've never been a huge online shopper before this time, but I think I just crave something new. So today we'll go over my worst quarantine purchases so you don't make the same mistakes I did, and a few that I actually think were worth it. Quick little sponsored break, I promise I won't make this too long, but this video is sponsored by an app called Empower, and this app is actually very, very relevant to this topic. So Empower is a financial and mobile banking app. I found that the interface of a lot of online banking websites is just so bad. I feel like it's almost made to be confusing so that you don't go looking for the hidden fees that they charge you. I have good intentions and I wanna do the whole spreadsheet budgeting thing, but oftentimes it falls to the back burner because it is pretty time consuming. And to be honest, I don't actually want to spend my time doing that. So I found Empower makes it much easier to see where I'm actually spending my money. You can set up Empower Spend tracking to set budgets for different categories like food, subscriptions, and utilities. And you get alerts on purchases you're tracking, which I find actually holds me accountable. Empower also has an auto savings feature. In savings, apparently only one in five Americans actually save any of their money. It's really important to be saving. I think if there's anything we've learned with this whole pandemic, it's that it, it's always good to have a savings, have a backup plan, an emergency fund, and there's never really a good time to save, right? Like you never, want to do it you just have to make a habit of it empower makes it super easy to save because you don't have to think about it with empower auto save you just set your weekly savings target and the app studies your income and spending every day and automatically knows when the right time is to move that amount of money from your checking into your savings it can tell if you don't have enough to transfer into your savings so it'll just do the partial amount or none at all but if it knows that you have the full amount then it will transfer it to your savings that way you don't actually have to think about saving you you just do it automatically. And you can withdraw the money whenever you want and pause this feature whenever you want. And right now you can actually get $5 from Empower when you download Empower and reach your first savings goal. So I'll have that link down below. There's no referral code, but you just have to use my link in order to get that. So I'll have that link down below for you guys to check out. I've been using Empower myself for the last couple months and I've really been loving it. All right, now let's get into my worst purchases. My first worst purchase is this little keyboard. Like a lot of people, I've had a phase of learning a musical instrument. I stuck with it for 20 days, okay? That's pretty good. I saw this keyboard in a bunch of YouTube videos, so I bought one. Turns out this is more for producing music. It's not great for learning the piano because it's just not big enough. It has maybe a third of the keys. I don't regret purchasing a musical instrument, but I definitely could have done more research and gotten one that was better for me. Next up are a couple of disappointing at-home beauty products. I found both of these products on Amazon. So the first is a lash lift kit and the second was a dip powder nail kit. Both of these I had high hopes for and just didn't really work that well for me. I bought this on Amazon and then I was kind of like, wait, is this safe? Like, is this safe? So I did a little investigating and I found the exact supplier on Alibaba. They do claim that it's safe but I don't see anything about FDA approval and nothing really backing up that claim about it being safe. Technically, makeup doesn't have to be FDA approved. The FDA does regulate makeup products, but this was such a new trend that who knows what's in it, you guys, and it smelled straight up toxic. Furthermore, my lashes were not lifted. They were sticking straight out after I used it. Like, I saw it in a YouTube video and Impulse purchased it and then later realized, you know, didn't really need this. Same thing with this, it's a dip powder nail kit and it actually does work pretty well. I did get it to work, but they just peel off really quick. Here's how the nails turned out. It probably looks better on camera, but actually they're like way too thick. They look good for about three days, but then all my nails have peeled off. Like I don't have nail polish on right now. 
it might be one of those things that you need to just get better at but in general I'm like eh, I kind of regret buying it because I know after the quarantine I probably won't use it I realized that a lot of my quick not well researched purchases didn't work out for example this podcast mic stand it was just not good quality the the base of it was like a gym weight very weird same thing with this cheap ish office chair it's okay but it's not as ergonomical as I hoped and I'm realizing that's actually pretty important so I sort of wish I just splurged on the perfect office chair. And I saved the worst for last. The Nintendo Switch is my worst purchase. Okay, I know this might be a shock because everyone loves this, but I really just fell into the hype and bought it and realized, you know, it just doesn't do it for me. I know pretty much everyone is obsessed with this thing and I completely fell into the hype. I saw everyone talking about how fun it was. So I bought one at the beginning of the quarantine. I didn't even think about the price. I just thought, I'm bored and I need something to get me through this. What I didn't realize is they were already marked up $100 from their normal price. They used to be sold for between $250 and $300, I believe, and now if you look for one, it's at least $500. I got mine for $412. I totally forgot that you have to buy games with it too. So I bought one game, Mario Kart, and it was pretty fun. But it was, I just felt like I wanted something different, so I bought Mario Party. Now I spent $500 on this thing, and at that point, I only kind of liked it. I thought the games were fun, but I wasn't obsessed with it. I know a lot of people love this, and that is great if you love it, and it's getting you through this time and making it more bearable. I think that's awesome. It just is a lot of money for something that I only kind of like, and I didn't realize that until later. Maybe the reason I didn't become obsessed with it is because I didn't get Animal Crossing or Zelda. Those games, I think, are the top ones. But at this point, I refuse to spend any more money on it. I, I'm just not gonna do it. So those are some of the purchases I feel like I didn't really need to make and I would personally recommend you skip. Although I feel like everyone's gonna disagree with me on the Switch, it's fine though. Now I'll share with you guys some things I purchased that I actually don't regret and I have really liked. So the first one is this Life X light bar. It comes in different pieces so you can make your own shapes with it. You can change the colors of this light and it makes for a very cool B-roll shot. So if you do video production or photography, this is really fun to play around with. Being limited to only shooting content in my house, it's been hard to be creative. I honestly have felt a little uninspired, but this has actually made it way more fun to shoot stuff recently. Here's how it looks with just the normal daylight. I wouldn't say it's a perfect daylight match, Sometimes it's a little too blue, a little too green, but in general, it looks pretty nice. I do a lot of video shots over here and sometimes I just need a little splash of light and rather than setting up a light, I can just turn it on. I've actually been vlogging quite a bit more recently and with a vlog, I don't necessarily want to set up a light, but if I want the shot to actually be lit, I'll throw this light on. Here's what it looks like without it. Here's what it looks like with it. On this vlog camera, the colors show up so intense. It's also just such a vibe. Like if you're editing late at night, but you have your cool mood lights, it's just that much more pleasant. This next one is a little random, but hear me out. A panini maker. I am obsessed with my panini maker. I did not expect this. I know this sounds like something that would be on an infomercial, but seriously, you guys, this thing is amazing. My kitchen is tiny and with two other roommates, we don't have enough room to all really be cooking at once. So this has been my little mini kitchen thing. It is a panini maker, grill, and griddler all in one. So very infomercially. I am obsessed with making paninis. It's so quick. It tastes like something you would get at a restaurant. I've made egg sandwiches. I've cooked a burger on here. Before the quarantine, I never cooked, but I have really embraced it. I think I've only post made it once. And so I have bought a few kitchen items and I don't regret it at all because it just made it a lot more fun for me and I've actually gotten a ton of use out of this thing. Next is a product that has so much hype surrounding it. I just had to check it out and I found that it is pretty awesome. And that is an air fryer. Before I got an air fryer, I didn't understand what it was. Air fryer? Does it actually fry things? What? It's essentially a mini oven. Because it's so small, it cooks things a lot faster, almost like a microwave, but not as fast, but it is a much better texture than a microwave. So these are frozen Trader Joe's black bean and cheese taquitos. They are really good, side note. <laughs> I used to microwave these, but the texture in the air fryer is, 
out of this world. So I'll put one into the air fryer and one into the microwave and you can see the difference. So here we have them. On the left is the microwave version and on the right is the air fryer. I know you guys probably can't tell, but huge texture difference here. The microwaved one is kind of slimy. The air fried one is crisped to perfection. I did burn it a little bit. <laughs> I'm grabbing this microphone so you can hear the crunch of this. It's crazy the difference this has made. And the cool thing about air fryers too is they're not actually that expensive. This one was around $80, but you can get some on Amazon for $30, $40. So both of these little kitchen appliances I found have just made cooking fun for me. And I'm sure I've saved hundreds of dollars now from not post mating. So well worth it for me. Between that and the panini maker, I don't even need a kitchen. Next best purchase are these food storage containers. Before I had these, I was going through Ziploc bags like crazy, which is so bad for the environment and a waste of money. I just got these on Amazon and they're the perfect size for a half of an onion, a tomato, avocado, or a lemon. These will totally pay for themselves in the cost of the Ziploc bags I won't be using and they just look better in your fridge. And last is a book. I just finished reading this book, Atomic Habits, and I really liked it. I feel like everyone could get something out of this book. I also feel like in general, I've never really regretted reading a book. It kind of doesn't matter whatever you're interested in, but I found it's been such a great way to start my day while in quarantine. A good habit, I might even say, and something that I honestly just didn't make the time for before the quarantine. So that is it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed. I think what I really learned is that Things I thought were gonna be entertaining or things I didn't research enough, I did end up regretting. But I really don't regret the cooking items. I've been using those a ton and I think in the long run, they'll save me money because I really, I can't even believe it. If you had told me months ago I wouldn't be ordering food from places, I honestly wouldn't even believe you. I feel like I'm a different person, guys. It's crazy. <laughs> so hopefully you guys can take something from this. Maybe you avoid a purchase that you don't really need. If you guys have anything that you regret purchasing during the quarantine or that you're really glad that you purchased, comment down below because I'd love to read that. As always, if you guys want more content from me, I have a podcast, Millennial Life Crisis, and a vlog channel, so I will link those down below. And that's it. I will see you guys next week. Bye!